Welcome to this SharePoint Patterns and Practices short video and this time we'll have a look on how we can use surf.json to make debugging of our SharePoint framework extension easier. And this is something which was part of the GA release of SharePoint framework extension which was happening back in September 2017, so in the Ignite week of uh, September 2017. So let's have a look on how things first work before the modifications and then we can have a look on how you can use the, the default configurations available in the serve.json to make the debugging easier for you when you're writing SharePoint Framework extensions. So we kind of use first uh, an sample uh, or list view command set and this is just the default list view command set getting out of uh, and getting uh, scaffolded uh, from the default German templates. And in here uh, you can see that this is uh, no changes within the template so this is exactly the default setup and we can actually say that there's a list ID, the typical configuration, we have a command one and command two. So in the past we were requesting uh, the div when we were when you started doing debugging, we basically told you in our documentation, and this was the only way to do the debugging, was that you did gulp serve and that's that's no browser. And essentially what it means is that we start uh, hosting the local host and then we actually request the SharePoint using certain query parameters so the SharePoint knows to request in this particular manifest in the context of SharePoint Online. So let's do that and let's actually talk about uh, the challenges of, of making that happen. So there we go, our local host is now up and running and we can actually jump on our dev tenant and our dev environment. So this is just a list uh, in a dev uh, site collection or a dev tenant uh, where we have some data and we wanna have those buttons available within here. Well, the, the request was that you, what you need to do is to use certain query parameters and query parameters which will then t tell the SharePoint to load your local host uh, configuration. And we have obviously all of this uh, documented. The challenge of this one is that this is actually getting quite uh, difficult. So uh, for example, for list view common set, uh, you needed to use the load SPFX, a debug manifest file, then you need to have the custom action and that your grid has to match your extension. Obviously, location definition, where the, the list extension, uh, list view command set is, is visible, and also how to set up the properties if you have property configurations uh, within your extension. Well, it worked, but it wasn't really that optimal. So now, uh, if I paste in that query parameter in my browser window, we're telling SharePoint now to load and request the, the files from a local host, and we can actually see the command uh, two getting visible in there, and the command one getting visible whenever we select multiple items. So there's the command two, and there's the command uh, one and two visible when there's uh, one item being selected, excuse me. Now, um, so as part of the um, debugging, or sorry, as part of the preview, uh, we were getting a lot of feedback around, well, we need to make this easier so that people can more easily do debugging and testing of their customization. And this was then included uh, as part of the GA ver uh, version of the extensions. So let's have a look on uh, what exactly is available for you to make the debugging easier. So whenever we uh, do the default scaffolding of our solution, depending on your selection, uh, we always create you uh, the default server configurations. And these are there to help you to make that debugging experience as easy as possible. But you need to do certain modifications. So, the, or let's say one at least modification, which is the base URL uh, within the server configuration. So you need to debug or configure that based on your environment. In our case, we wanted to actually use that custom list uh, within my tenant as the lowest hosting location. So I'm gonna copy that. And then I'm gonna paste in that to the page URL. And let's actually update that one. So that's for the default entry. And then we have this command X, which is a secondary entry uh, for that one as well. And you might be wondering why do I actually have multiple entries here? Well, the, the key point of this one is that you can actually easily test the properties um, by using multiple entries uh, within your serve.json. So let's actually do here alternative configuration and uh, alternative uh, alternative uh, sample two config. And the whole point of this one is that now you can easily do different adaptions or configurations for your properties, which might then change the behavior of the extension within the context of SharePoint. 
Let's first, however, uh, run the default configuration. How, so how do we actually make this happen? Well, it's as easy as writing help here called observe. And when we do that, what's going to happen is that SharePoint, well, the, the, the Node.js and the Yeoman templates and everything else is going to start up a browser in the context of that given URL. So in at least in Windows scenario, it's going to be the latest browser which was actually opened. So in my case, I quite often use uh, Google Chrome. So in my case, I have multiple profiles. So I always go and activate or request a one-time page in this session, and that will then uh, make that as the, as the last browser session getting open. So when I do call serve, that's where I'm actually getting the additional tab. If you're using an alter some other operating system than Windows, there's some small, small differences how this behavior actually works. But in this case, like you could see, uh, I'm actually now running directly in the context of the of the list. My debugging URL is automatically given to me, so I don't need to do any manual updates and manual configurations for that. And we can actually see that my command uh, patterns are there. And if I activate a one, we can see the command one and two. So now, okay, let's move back on the solution uh, and let me slightly get that bigger. So let's stop uh, the currently running setup. And how do we then, if that's the default, so I did a cop serve and the default actually gets started. So how do I now execute this alternative or third or fourth configuration? Well, it is as easy as writing here cop serve dash dash uh, config equals uh, command ext. And that's going to then actually tell uh, for the gallop that we actually want to use the alternative command. And now in this case, when I click to load in debugging scripts, we will actually load to alternative configuration. So let's go and see. And now the text of that one has been updated as alternative sample to config. So we're running in the configuration or in the alternative configuration within that uh, based on the, the, the serve.json. Good. Now, we used the list view common set in this demo. So let's actually move in here and let's actually double check that uh, how the setup is working with the other extensions as well. So this is the configuration for list view common set. Uh, you can configure, for example, uh, the location entry uh, where the location is. Uh, so in this case, as an example, if I'm getting rid of the, the command bar, it will mean that this uh, particular configuration will make those buttons available in both command bar and also in the context menu. So we can easily see that one happening here. Let's do call serve config command text. That's going to again start the browser in my session. And we can see that the, the buttons are getting loaded. And if I come in here, we can actually say that my context menu has those buttons as well, uh, based on that configuration, which I just applied. Now, what about application customizer and field customizer? And let's have a look on them as well. So uh, I have here a default configuration uh, for field customizer. And there's few things in the field customizer case which are slightly different. If we'll have a look on the old debugging URL model, we can actually see that in the field customizer case, we actually need to tell that we are, it's a field customizer, and then we're loading that or specifying the field in the which is the context or the field where the field customizer is getting loaded. So in this case, we are essentially saying field inter with an internal name of percent, please load this field customizer with that ID and with those properties. And that's something which we need to properly uh, configure in the field customizer serve JSON instance here. And this isn't necessarily super, super obvious. So let's actually have a look on that one. So first of all, I'm going to get in here and let's uh, close view of the additional browsers because we don't actually need to get them open. And I'm going to get the URL uh, as my hosting URL. We're going to use this list uh, for this particular example as well. So I'm going to come back here and I'm going to update the base URL. Uh, properly for both of the configurations just to avoid any any surprises there. Now that is again the ID of the field customizer. So if I quickly have a look on the manifest, we can see that it starts with the 9C949, which is essentially automatically configured as the identifier. But how do we then identify the field? And this is where which might not be super obvious. So we need to actually update here 
the internal name of that field and in my case i created that field using the ui and i give it a name called percent and that's going to be automatically created as the internal name for the field as well so and then i when i'm actually doing the field customizers and i'm updating that as the field name we will automatically associate the field customizer to the percent field and let's make sure that that's working properly so let's open up uh, again our console let's come in here let's first uh, request the page without any customizers we can say that we have the percentage value uh, in for that field and we're going to use the default custom uh, field customizer so this won't be super super let's say mind bubbling uh, what we're doing here but you can see the, the change within the ui again and again let's allow the loading the debugging scripts and we can see that we're adding that value uh, prefix uh, before rendering out the actual value of the of the field and obviously this could be much more complex scenario but in this is the default scaffold uh, solution to make that happen and again we don't need to worry about what is the query parameter all of that is taken care of automatically based on that uh, that uh, json configuration and just in case just to demonstrate that one as well uh, so we can absolutely do the same uh, same for the application customizers so in the application customizer case the serve.json uh, has the, exactly the same configuration we we'll probably well we don't need to now demonstrate this but you'll see that we'll update uh, what is requested is that you'll update the page url again based on the context where you want to test and run uh, the, the extension on and you're able to provide the properties and all of those configurations without again worrying on if i'm able to create the right query parameters by yourself now if you're wondering what does it actually mean if i have then multiple multiple of these content types and and uh, uh, extensions in the single solution and and we can quickly have a look on that one as well uh, let's not actually demonstrate this in active but i can actually quickly explain what's going to happen here so this is a slightly more complex solution uh, we have a one web part which is hello there web part and we also have multiple extensions and what's going to happen here is that you'll have default configuration for the one which was created first so in this case the default configuration uh, is application customizer because that was the first component type for that particular solution and that's fine it doesn't really matter that much um, but then when we're adding additional uh, application customizers or a secondary application customizer which is called another app um, we actually add those as additional configurations in the serve.json and the, the way this is then uh, can be used is that you simply again use the gulp serve so gulp serve um, gulp serve and that does uh, config equals uh, the field x and you will be running then in that particular extension context and this is mainly because you cannot actually debug multiple extensions at the same time so if you need to do that and and let's say the integration testing you need to get some of the extensions already up and running on the site uh, using in quotes the, the live production uh, way of deployment so the live debugging uh, and running um, running the query parameters or running automatically the query parameters using the serve JSON is only supported one extension at a time. Cool. But that's it uh, for this particular video. So what I wanted to quickly go through is how you can use the serve JSON to simplify uh, the, the debugging of your SharePoint framework extensions. And this was part of the 1.3 release. And it's uh, and in this the video, I was using the 1.3.4 version of SharePoint framework. And obviously, the future versions will support this one as well. Thanks for watching and keep the feedback coming. Thank you.